Hello, we are Liz and Jamie. And we live on a boat with a cat. In the last episode, we hung out at exclusive Datai Bay on Langkawi. Jamie finally got the water maker going. And we bought a new outboard motor. After the 16-hour passage from Langkawi to Koh Lanta, we were ready for some relaxation. We had time before checking into Thailand for a few days at this favourite sailing destination. The west coast is dotted with anchorages, each the same same but different. Just before we left Langkawi, I had a call from my brother to say Mum, who was diagnosed with Parkinson's 10 years ago, wasn't doing very well. He thought I should go back to the UK to see her. Jamie and I didn't know when I would be back, so this could be our last sail together for a while. We decided to make the best of it and enjoy a few more days sailing before I caught the flight from Phuket. We left Lanta and made our way towards Phi Phi Lee. Got a couple of questions for you. Yes, let me look presentable. Yeah. All right, the first one is uh, where are we, what are we doing, and where are we going, and where have we been, which is lots of questions in one. And the second one is why are you in a bad mood today? <laughs> uh, we have just left Lanta. We're heading to the PP Islands, but PP Lee this time, not PP Don. PP Don is where we had the accident and where all the tourism is and all the boats and the town and the drinking and the partying. And PP Lee is the uh, rather beautiful um, Hong. It's two actually, two Hongs, which was used uh, in the film The Beach. So we're actually going to try and get to see that. And we have pretty good wind, 
it's uh, almost up our bum actually it's come round to almost on the beam now but um, yeah we've been almost running downwind and uh, yeah it's been good and <laughs> um, because I don't know so I'm just fed up and you're leaving me for a, uh, a period of time that we don't know how long it's going to be and yeah but I'm not leaving you willingly you know that there's a reason don't you yeah no you're also being an ass <laughs> you're being stupid and I don't like it when you're being stupid you know a few days before you go I want to enjoy this time I want to enjoy our time that we have left together because the next however long I'm gonna be on my Todd so it'd be, I'd like it if it was a nice pleasant time with you rather than you being all niggly and stroppy and moody Okay, well I say here on camera, I'm sorry that I've been stroppy and moody. Um, I am worried about my mum, as everybody knows, but um, I should try and be nicer to you. Thank you. So we're looking forward to PP Lee. Yeah, so we're, we've never been there before and of course it's a very big touristy spot, so there are lots of, uh, probably going to be lots of day tripper boats there. Uh, we're hoping that we can grab a mooring, maybe even anchor as well. But um, it's not quite full season yet. And we are, we have been told that tourism has dropped. So I, I have noticed there are less boats in, you know, a few places we've been to, far less boats than I thought there would be. Um, but this is a really popular spot because everyone wants to see where Leonardo DiCaprio frolicked with Tilda Swinton or whatever her name is. So um, it's going to be a busy one, I should think. But I'm, what I'm really hoping is we get the drone up in the air. Wouldn't it be great if we could get a shot with the drone yeah. looking down into the, into the hong? I don't know, we'll see. I'm not even sure if we're allowed to do that. I miss you. Where are you hiding? Miss you. Your soul's not lighting up now. I miss you and the hope. Once shining through you Did someone hurt you? Did you give in to bribery? Did fear wrap around you? Did power strong earn liberty? I would forgive you If you would be the change again And I could support you if freedom rang aloud again, you'll be saying Where men with courage stand somehow, you'll be saying Will you listen now? Will you listen now? I miss you Will you listen now? I miss you. We're on the southeastern corner of PP Lee, Co PP Lee, which is part of the PP group of islands. Does it make you want to go for a PP? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> Childish. <laughs> no, I don't want to go for a PP. I went for a PP earlier. So, um, just tell us about uh, what you can see over your shoulder. Um, yeah, over my shoulder we've got a rock. It has got a name, but I don't remember the name of it. There's, there's a rock here and behind it is a bay with a little beach. But it's a little bit too rough here for the porter boat. We can't, we can't go ashore, uh, which is a shame. If it flattens out a bit in the next few hours, we'll, we definitely will go and have a look, proper look. At the moment we're actually not anchored, we're on a mooring buoy. So we're feeling reasonably safe. Um, we are thinking that we'll probably go around the corner to the west side um, later, about five-ish maybe. 
when all the day trippers have gone, because we had a look just now and it's really, really packed. So we don't want to go in there when there's all those people in there. Yeah, when I said we're over your shoulder, what I meant was there we can see people. What's going on there? Oh, right. So on the other side, where, where I was saying that we, we're going to uh, try and anchor later, that's Maya Bay, which is the place where they filmed the beach, which is why everybody wants to go there. But it's not just that, it is really pretty. We can see it when we went past. And uh, you get off your long tail or your day tripper boat, go onto the beach, and then you walk through the island, and that's where you come out. We rested up for a while until it was late afternoon and the long tail started heading for home. Then we slipped the mooring and headed to Maya Bay where we hoped we'd find a spot for the night inside the protection of the anchorage. It was still crowded in there, so we anchored outside until the mooring boys gradually freed up. So tell us about the sunset shots we were going to get with the drone. Yeah, you had about 15 minutes to get into the boat to get the drone up in the air and I think that you broke one of the props because it started and then it tilted and then bang went one of the props so we didn't get it, which is a real shame, but never mind. We'll get a sunrise shot instead. Yes, because we should explain we are under some kind of time constraint here. Yeah. Now that we've got a mooring buoy, we could just stay here for a few days. Mm. Um, but we have to get back to Al Chalong. So what, yeah. do, what do you think? Do yeah. we hang around tomorrow for any length of time? I think we should stay here at least for the morning. So we're going to get up really early at sunrise and uh, get as much of the bay seen when there's no one else around and then we can just enjoy ourselves until all the day tripper boats and the long tails drive us insane and then we have to head back to Ashelon. With only two other boats in the now peaceful anchorage, we watched the sun turn the rocks from grey to orange to blue until only the stars lit the sky. what PP Lee looks like first thing in the morning when there are no other boats apart from the Maya sleepover boat I think those guys spent the night on shore we can see a couple of lights on shore and then uh, came back late they're just waking up but uh, you can see look at this the place is bereft of long tails and day tripper boats and dive boats just us and a little chart boat behind us. But look at this water. I think this is the clearest water we've seen uh, in a very long while, actually. I know you can't see much, but hopefully we'll go down there and um, take the cameras with us, see what we can find. But uh, we need to do all of this before the day tripper boats start coming in. Maya Bay is small, only around 0.2 of a nautical mile wide and half a nautical mile long. There are actually three beaches in the lagoon where the film was set. Leonardo's beach in the south is obviously number one. On the east side is beach number two and tucked up under the northern cliffs right next to Esper is beach number three. This is 
beach number two over here. It's where I thought it might be quite nice to land. Like the islands of Pangna Bay, Pee Pee Lee's limestone rock has been beaten by the rain and sea over millennia, resulting in stunning overhangs, caves and caverns. We circled the bay, ending up by the famous beach. We stayed at Pee Pee Lee last night. We anchored here in Maya Bay um, with a catamaran, another yacht, and um, uh, a tripper boat. Just us in the whole bay. So it was beautiful and peaceful. Had a good night's sleep. And we got up early, six o'clock this morning, before the sun came up. And the sun's coming up now behind you, Jamie. It's coming up, it hasn't hit the bay yet, so it's lovely and cool here. And we've just taken the uh, water boat round in a circle and we're at the beach end where they filmed the beach and there's no coral, just sand. What coral there is looks pretty dead. But in the middle we think there's some quite nice coral so we might try and uh, do a little bit of diving on that. And behind Jamie, where the beach is, there's a group of tourists who obviously stayed there last night and they all think they're in the film, it's really sweet. And behind you is Esper. And right behind Esper was empty beach number three. Looking rather enticing after sitting in the dinghy for an hour. We made a quick sprint across the bay to haul the dinghy onto the sand to go for a snorkel. There's a coral bank in the middle of the bay where anchoring is forbidden and all yachts must use laid moorings. With hundreds of visitors a day, the delicate ecology is struggling to survive, but the bay is home to lots of fish which make a beeline for any new yachts arriving.
We dried off on deck and by nine o'clock were making our way to Ao Shalong on Phuket. There we would check into Thailand and two days later I would begin my 24-hour journey back to London. The sail across to Phuket took just under six hours. We had good wind and the weather was kind. Did you know that the collective noun for a flock of terns is cotillion? Neither did I till I read it on a birding website. Whatever you want to call it, a whole load of terns attacking a bait ball wasn't enough to stir Millie from her comfortable spot on the furling lines. We were both really down about me having to leave, but it was tinged with some excitement because we had some shopping planned in our Shalom. We'd picked up a Tahatsu outboard motor from Langkawi with the idea that a larger engine would help us get out of trouble should Esper need a tow or a nudge in the future. Our porter boat had served us well, but now we needed a dinghy that would accommodate the new outboard. Cholamark on Phuket is the go-to destination for dinghies. They make their own, but are also agents for Highfield. So this is possibly what we're going to go for. This is the 2.9 metre and it's double skinned uh, aluminium bottom. Of course the advantage of aluminium over GRP bottoms is that it's much lighter and it's far more robust as well. So it means we can drag it onto beaches in pretty much the same way we did with our porter boat. And uh, it's just a bit more hard wearing. You can see this is the extra floor here. So it actually has a cavity inside here. And that's the extra flat floor. And of course the advantage of this is when we're filling up jerry cans, uh, shopping, it has a flat surface to sit in rather than a, a nasty V for it to all fall into. It also keeps it dry as well, so the water actually runs down into the bottom cavity, um, which is crucial. One of the other really important things as well is the size of the, um, of the tubes. So again, with this particular manufacturer, they have two types of tubes. They have their lightweight version, so the tube is only so wide. This one, it's much wider. Obviously, the wider the tube, the drier the bum from when you're sitting on it. And of course, um, it's a lot safer as well. One other really important thing is to work out how we're going to lift it up. And uh, the lifting points here, they've actually got uh, three lifting points, one at the back, in fact, and they've got two at the front because this particular model has a little well at the front that allows you to put uh, jerry cans, tools, whatever. So the well with the divide, it actually has two points at which to uh, fix your hoisting points. It just so happens that the dimensions of this coincide with our davits that we have at the moment. So the inside length is 1.9 meters, which is exactly the same uh, width between our two davits, which is fantastic. The other thing as well is hopefully when we raise this up on the davits, um, it should sit nice light, um, nice, nicely in the centre of the davits from the, from the front to the back as well. Do you remember how much it weighs? 44 kilos. And how much does our porter boat weigh? 27. 28. 28. So it's quite a big difference. It is a lot heavier. It's going to be a lot more, di it's going to be a lot more difficult to drag it up the beach. <laughs> than the porter boat, but um, we're confident that it's going to be okay on the davits. The davits will be able to hold it. But it's still pretty light for the size. We will see. Yeah, it's much lighter. I think comparable um, ribs with a GRP bottom, you're probably talking 60 kilos. Yeah. Our outboard is, new outboard's heavier, but it's still quite light. And what was it I said about me hanging off the davits? Yes, this dinghy, plus our new motor, together weigh less than Jamie does. And since he can hang off the davits, this whole caboodle should be able to hang off the davits. 
There is one other thing I wanted to just discuss, is that uh, we're going to get a cover for it. It actually does come with a cover, but that's a rain cover for when you're away. Um, and it also comes, by the way, with seats and various other bits and pieces. But we're going to cover our beautiful Hyperlon um, dinghy in what? Shocking bright orange. Wait and see. <laughs> with the dinghy on order and my flight only hours away, there was nothing left to do but have a pizza. In the next episode, Jamie sells one of our old dinghies. There she goes, there goes our tinker. Picks up a new one. And he and American McGee discover a secret location. American, we are at this secret location, aren't we? We are, Jamie. It's a very nice uh, island hiding off the coast of Thailand. Follow the boat. <laughs> If you missed it, you can catch our previous episode here. If you're interested in the technical aspects of boat maintenance, watch our 45-episode sailboat refit series here. If you enjoy our sailing channel and would like to show some love, come and find us here. Thank you.